This video pertains to Puerto Rican history and how I discovered them, um, intertwined with it through my uncle and my grandmother's stories of their past. For some reason, we're always kept in the dark onto many things and that just explains how some Puerto Ricans may be confused onto their own ethnicity. Sure, we're born all Puerto Rican, but some people can be quite diverse and some totally biased for lack of a better term onto their history. This is how it is here in Puerto Rico. Some people are open about it and some people are not. And of course, I respect their self-identity. I guess everybody here is Boricua, but each individual has their right to their opinion. I get it. We are all different and the same. And some people will think some groups are way cooler than others. Before knowing what I know now, I was told that the Taino-looking side of my family are ancestors of Taino. It was obvious just by looking at them, and I looked just like them, if not a tad more Taino. How though? My mom is supposed to be whiter. It was my father's side who were dark-skinned, and just so eerily native. So anyway, I kind of knew, but I still wanted to confirm my phenotype somehow, maybe through science. I truly wondered if I was probably a white guy with sub-Saharan African ancestry, making me look indigenous Puerto Rican looking. Cause we all know sometimes mulatto can look indigenous when the subject is born with the European hair side of the family along with the darker skin. But like I said, this is only sometimes. My uncle, who is my great uncle from my mother's side, told me we had many pale type family from Capo Rojo, Ormigueros, and Sabana Grande. They were tall, he said. Redheads, freckles. Ancestry from Basque were suggested being that my grandmother is Vasquez, which means son of Vasco. We had last names like Almodovar, and we were Perez like three times down the line. However, our Corsican ancestry was widely spoken, as he used to claim that his father's his father was a man born in Italy. He also remembers that as kids, Things like the radio were also in Italian. Even some of his other relatives were able to speak Italian and just maybe had connections to Italian neighborhoods in New York. My family housed near many Italians and Jews in the 50s as their Puerto Rican identity drove my family to the brink through the Puerto Rican government nationalist persecution. I'm very open-minded. For instance, much of my family members who claim no sub-Saharan African but not me. Even if I really didn't know for sure, I knew I was part black. But just so you can firmly grasp the focus of this story, I thought my father was the only one passing me down Taino DNA. My father who is unrelated to my uncle and obviously my mother. So if I walk along with what they said and I'm white, then why was I born with slightly more Taino phenotype than my own father? I wasn't my only clue, and my own mother just didn't seem 100% South Spanish to me. On the other side of things, my uncle did used to say he had olive skin. Even though his uncles were tall, he seemed to be only 5'6 at most, and he used to tell me my cheekbones were not high. Mines are pretty indigenous looking, but not anywhere as near as prominent as his. Different clues seemed to appear as time went on. Have you ever met somebody your entire life and believe that person is more of what there is to say than what you can see? After knowing what I know now, the day I truly looked at my uncle's eyes, I saw the truth. The shape of my uncle's eyes are very out of whack as they point downward. And by out of whack, it would also pretty much mean that his eyes have an Asiatic flair to them. Considering out of whack themselves are not entirely Asiatic. And I'll explain that more in detail in another video. But if I had my Taino phenotypes and my questions, my uncle's eyes were at another level out of whack than my own. His eyes gave me clues and I needed to move on forward. If you think things like this pushed me to dig deeper, I was later told things that would have never crossed my imagination. Just as my grandmother and her brother, my uncle, don't have the ability to tell the whole story on their own. I could see the broader picture when I observed the data. Like for instance, it's certain my family was driven off the island in the early to mid-1900s. 
because by then Puerto Ricans weren't even permitted to have a home decor Puerto Rican flag in your property, let alone walk around with an open Puerto Rican flag. The pressure definitely meant life or death, bad quality of life or good quality of life. In fact, my family's nationalism went as far as burning schools that were lifted by the United States when they tried to implement only English schools forced onto the Puerto Rican youth. My great uncle told me this was done by his aunt, although I'm not sure if it was his great aunt. I just never considered the possibility that this was real, onto the level of protagonism that my family has contributed onto Puerto Rican history. It was at that same time that I met with some knowledgeable leaders of the Taino community. Jennifer. It's organizations from Puerto Rico that embrace Taino lifestyle through affiliation. They're pretty cool hey. and very interesting stuff. <laughs> in short, we ended up talking about the events that took place in the Grito de Lares. This was an attempt to bring Puerto Rico into a state of sovereignty. It was to be done by a coup, orchestrated by Cuban and Boricua. The Cubans were able to taste victory, but the Puerto Ricans were left empty-handed. Yes, that was brief, but that's not my focus right now. These people have sides of the story that are only available through hard research. They told me this group had participated in the Grito de Lares, had a leader that would motivate this group by claiming that they were Taino, and that they wouldn't stand for whatever was happening at the time, then this would amplify their reasons to do so. Then. It hit me again. Lattice would be kind of close to the regions my family come from. So I went to my great uncle as he sat on his reclinable chair and said, Our family were enormous nationalists in the past, so therefore, were they also part of El Grito de Lares? He then pushes the chair up and looks at me with wide eyes and tells me, Yes. Using a tone that to me sounded more like I've been telling you all this time. So I wanted to verify if my uncle's aunt would be contemporary to El Grito de Lares. El Grito de Lares took place in 1868. So my hypothesis is that my uncle's great-grandparents was the generation that participated in some of these most extreme expressions of nationalism. I'm gonna leave it here for now, but I intend to finish this story in another video. So don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. This is Abaquetone Borique. Out.